I'm opening up Zoom right now. All right. So this is urine therapy training course number third, number 12. Yes, number 12. And this is going to be done in a style, Donna and Kevin, known as collar response. You're familiar with chanting and doing kirtan? Chanting. I'm not sure on the other, what you just said. <laughs> yeah, kirtan basically means a group of people get together and do chants and devotions to the divine. Oh, beautiful. Yes. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read and then you guys are going to repeat it. Beautiful. That's call and response. All right, here we go. I take this water of life. I take the water of life. I want their comments to be picked up by the camera. I take this water of life. I declare it the water of light. I declare it the water of life. Water of light. As I bring this water within this body. As I bring this water within this, my body. It allows me to glow. It allows me to glow. I take this water of light. I take this water of light. I declare it the water of God. I declare it the water of God. I am the master of all I do and all that I am. I am the master of all I do and all that I am. So be it. So be it. So it is. Here's to your health and happiness. Mm. All right, guys. Um, so let's start off by everybody telling us who you are, how you got started on this journey, and any insights you've gained since you've been doing urine therapy? Oh. Who wants to go first, Donna? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Right. Um, well, years and years ago, I actually, I don't know how I stumbled onto it, but I started using it on my face. And then I got a bit, I didn't know anything about it. I just heard something about it's good for your skin. So that's what I did. And then I got a little bit worried that I was going to start smelling. So I stopped. <laughs> and then I don't know what, how I've got, what happened for me to get back into it now. But, um, oh, I'm loving it. I'm doing everything, just about everything. Uh, my hair, I think, we think I might have had radiation. Um, Something. What, yeah, from... Oh, I've been to protests in Canberra. I don't know what if you know what it's like down here with um, the restrictions and stuff. But I was zapped with something and I was burnt and my hair started falling out and really thin. And I've started using this on my hair and it's, it looks messy now because I've just got out of bed because it's four o'clock in the morning. But um, it's starting to come back and it's starting to get soft and healthy again. And I'm so excited because it... It was actually falling out. It was thin. It was dry. It was it was terrible, and nothing. We couldn't do anything with it. But now it's starting to come back now, so I'm very excited, and I'm talking about it, and people are starting to get interested because I'm just so happy about it. <laughs> it's just coming when I talk about it. It's just oh, I just get excited and happy. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, this stuff is contagious. Mm. Uh, you'll know more and more people want to know your secret for looking healthy and having the energy. So yeah. be, be prepared. People want to know your, your, your secret to health and beauty. Uh, Daniel, are you there? Oh, happy Boston. Daniel, or to Daniel. Anyway. While well, there, we're waiting for them to come back. I'm going to show you some of the books on urine therapy that I have. We we'll start off with the books that I've written. You've already seen the manual. You've seen this guy. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah. All right. In 2020 is when this book came out. Mm -hmm. In 2023, also in 2020, in 2022, this book came out. The Secrets of You thing. And I brought back a 1994 classic that talked about urine therapy, but it also talked about a lot of metaphysical stuff and uh, the history of the author, who is one of my spiritual teachers for many years. Uh, he talks about everything from healing senility to being physically immortal. 
Okay. And then the new yeah. the newest book came out this year, which is upside down. <laughs> this is the handbook, which basically takes the original book and adds a lot more content and and maybe one more protocol, and it answers everyone's questions, not only the people who are on this journey, but the people who are doubters and disbelievers. Okay, so what I did was I decided that people are having a tough time introducing it to their loved ones and their families and to their friends. And so I was, I've been uh, coaching people how to cross that barrier. Yeah, I can hear you now. Welcome back, Daniel. <laughs> so some of the other books, this book was my, was my Bible. I still keep it around. The Golden Fountain by Colin Vanderkroon. All right, this one came out in 1994. And, and then there's this one, Oren, Omad Oren Looping by David Phillips out there in Canada. And basically what he teaches is drink your urine all day and only eat one meal. And if you keep it raw foods, you're much better off than everybody else who's still trying to step in the cooked world and the non-cooked world. And, you know, they're having a tough time with that conflict. There's this book, Urotherapy by Martin Lara. which also came out in the 90s. And there's a bunch of books by Harry Matadine and some other authors out there. Now, I decided to uh, help out the uh, understanding of urine therapy with the books that I brought because we, were, we weren't addressing the, the psychological and the emotional counterpart of what it's like to start drinking something that everybody tells you is a waste product and is disgusting. So we've had to re-understand re how to formulate in our minds that maybe our body, got, we got it right, the doctors got it wrong, and your body comes with the ability to heal itself, supply you with thousands of nutrients that are rich, not only food, but also medicine for you. And there's a way that you can uh, <clears throat> live a long, healthy life without having to rely on drugs or supplements. Is that a good feeling? That's a good feeling. <laughs> That's a good feeling. To think you can save money, you don't have to buy all these vitamins and nutrients and amino acids and essential this and da 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 when your body's making it for you many times during the day. Or just take it once a month or something like that. Yeah. And then you just loop it. Um, yes, you can loop it. Now we're going to get to the understanding of looping in just a minute here. <clears throat> Any questions so far? I was, I was just able to find the uh, the healing water from within. Yeah, yes, Daniel. I misplaced the other book. Okay. Um, what I'm going to show Donna, which you're just going to have to get it in your mind, what I'm about to show her, uh, is yeah. several of the urine therapy protocol uh, devices, yeah. uh, supplies, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, I know those. All right. First thing, Donna, whether you get these or not, I highly recommend them, though. When you have them, then you can do eye cups, for example. Yeah. Right? You know what these are. I'm doing, I'm doing that. I'm not using that, but I am doing the eye washes. That yeah. And you're going to learn how to use them in a way that not only – nourishes the iris, the sclera, the whole eye orbital thing, uh, but how to, what to do with it when it's over. Because you can go from eye, cut, eye to eye, and then when you're done, just rinse it over the, the eyeball, just pour it over your eyeball. Mm -hmm. Okay, the companion to the eye cup, which came out in the manual, I have to get rid of these things, is goggles. <laughs> And goggles are cool because they can hold all the orange inside the goggle while you're keeping your eyes open. And you can do that for a lot longer than the eye cup. And you don't and you can do both eyes at once. At so, first, I thought you were talking about glasses. I am. I'm talking you about to, you have to get rid of those. These are goggles, and Daniel. Feel the eyes. Do you have goggles, either one of you? No. Yeah. All right, well, well, what do you have or not? 
they're they're very practical and they're good things to use the goggles uh the next thing we have is neti pot neti pot most people know this through yoga and through ayurvedic practitioners is a way to clean the nose from one nostril to the other because it just drains on the other side right and some people go a little bit further and they're able to snort it up their nose yeah that's what i do right and um after you do the neti pot one of, one of the most beneficial things other than drinking is to drink in the nose and when you drink in the nose whether you snort it out the palm of your hand use a bulb and squirt it up get one of these cool sprays and spray it up this way they hold about two maybe three ounces and these are great because you can carry them with you everywhere and when you feel like your brain is starting to get slow and you're not really tracking do a three about three squirts in each nose and your brain comes back online mm -hmm. okay and uh what it does and i'll explain it further when we get into the protocols is that by drinking it up the nose it crosses not only uh it rehydrates all the five senses cavities it'll rehydrate all the cavities it also is able to cross the blood brain barrier and recalcify and activate the pineal gland so we're going to learn more about that from the man himself samuel g cohen who wrote the book drinking through the nose and he may have it on Amazon now, Drinking Through the Nose by Samuel Cohen. We're working on doing an interview as we speak. He's out in, I think he might have gone back to Israel. So um, we also have, everybody's got to have these. Cotton balls. You can either use them for exfoliating, for facials. You can use these for belly button soaks. You can leave this in your belly button overnight and get all those nutrients in the thousands and thousands of nerve endings that attach to uh, the body that make its way to the bloodstream. So these are very practical. And the companion to that uh, is this, a cotton pad. So whatever you can get your hands on, these are great for just an instant something. If you've got a cut, a scratch, a bruise, a bug bite, uh, if you get these capillary bursts, if you're people over 50 and these all of a sudden you get these little purple colors on your skin, putting urine on the skin heals it up in four days. If you get a sunburn, this thing's gonna go away in 10 minutes and your friends are gonna go, ow, ooh, e, my skin hurts. And you're going, why don't you just pee on yourself? I've noticed that I'm not getting burnt. I'm just going brown since I've been, is that? Yeah. 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 Well, your body's more balanced than most people. The other thing that's useful is cotton tips. You can use these either in the ear, in the nose, uh, wherever you can imagine you would use uh, Q-tips. I don't know if they call them Q-tips in Australia. Okay. You with me so far? Uh, this is a really cool device. You've heard of nebulizers or diffusers. Most people use them for essential oil distribution. But there are these devices out in the market now that are called a mesh nebulizer. Mesh. Mesh, M-E-S-H. Yeah. You can still find them online. This particular brand went off the market like within a month after everybody in the water community was buying them. Uh, they're, they're about 30 bucks on Amazon and it holds, it has a chamber up here that holds about a fourth of an ounce. It holds about a third or a fourth of the ounce in this chamber. It runs on batteries. And then what it does, because there's a mesh, it takes the liquid and then it transforms it into vapor and it comes out like steam. Mm -hmm. So not only can you get it a lot finer particles to be distributed up your nose. The company also comes with a face cover. You can use it directly in your mouth for either an adult or a child, you just switch the tips. And this is great for exfoliating the skin. Just having a little spray shooting across your face, very soothing. So this is known as a mesh nebulizer. Okay. 
can you kind of tell I'm into this kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The store sells this. It's called an ear wax removal kit. It's basically a plastic syringe. And the plastic syringe either looks like this. And this one holds 20, C, uh, 20, 20 milliliters. Or it looks like this, which I got from Daniel at a retreat, holds twice as much. Or if you just don't have three or four dollars, you go down to the pharmacist and say, do you have one of those earwax removal samples? And he'll give you these for free over at like Target. All right. So you can either use them in the nose and the ears. You could use this up your bum if you needed to, if you needed to do an implant. All right. Another thing that's very useful to have is pH strips. Now you want to make sure you get the right pH strips. Where's my other ones? Most of them at the health food store only go up to eight. Alkalinity only goes to eight pH, but the, the good ones, they go up to 14. So you want to want to check the the uh, the rating on it because your urine will typically sit around nine or ten if it's you know if you're eating well and you're not doing a lot of meat and drugs and dairy products it should register between eight nine eight or nine in there and I've had mine shoot up to twelve and thirteen before I've met people who had it fourteen uh, but on the average most people's urine is seven or eight so it's alkaline to begin with. Mm -hmm. All right. People say, well, if it's acidic, would I want to put it on my eyes for, you know, cataracts and eye issues? I said, yes, because it's not acidic unless you're eating 100 percent acid foods. But keep in mind, this is a byproduct of blood plasma, not of the digestive tract. So it goes through a, a humongous filtration uh, um, process with 1.2 million little uh, filters known as the nephron. And we're going to get to that when we start talking about the protocol. So it's a highly filtered, bioavailable, activated, living, uh, distilled water. This is what urine is. If you get a chance to see it under a microscope, we have someone in our community, Fiona, she zoomed in like 50 times magnification. And you can see the crystalline formations in your urine. This is distilled water. This is structured water at its finest. That should be exciting. Okay. Um, what else we got? You can simply, if you need something to carry in throughout the day, but you got nothing, you can get one of these cobalt blue glass bottles or uh, amber. You can do straight clear glass if you want, but for people who like to protect things, they like the colored glass. And this is only two or three ounces, but it's enough to carry through you throughout the day. If you have an emergency situation, you either need to pop it back down your throat, up your nose, or on some kind of scratch, cut, or whatever. All right. What else can I show you? Oh, very important. Very important. A foot tub for foot soak. You got one? Yeah. All right. This can either be a brand name like Tupperware. It could be a, uh, an off-brand name at, at Walmart. And some people who came to our retreat in California brought a Pyrex uh, baking uh, dish. And their feet were big enough. Were, it was small enough. To fit. So use these for your foot soaks or your hand soaks. Okay. These are a lifesaver. Oh. Enema bags. Oh. Enema kit. That's massive. I thought it was a hot water bottle. Well, no. Yes, it can be both. It can be something you're using as a douche bag. I mean, whatever you want to use it for, but if you use it for an orin enema, you familiar with the word orin? Yes. Okay. So you might hear me say orin, shibambu, or other words. Um, we're moving people away from urine because that was a word that was made up by the Rockefellers when they decided to, to start demonizing urine therapy in 1917. And so there is a softer, more inviting word, which is orin, 
which has been made popular by Andrew Norton Weber back in the beginning of 2000. And if you dig a little deeper, you'll find out that, have you heard of Aquaman? Aquaman was a superhero that lived in the sea. Oh, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> if, you go, if, you, if you go to Wikipedia and you read into the content further down, you'll find out that Aquaman's real name was Orin. Hmm. Is that one of the books? I think I've read that. One of the books. All right, so this is a time, this is a lifesaver. Most people are full of you know what. And if you have if you have things that have been stuck on the inside lining of your small intestines or large intestines, or if you have fatty deposits, toxic material, it keeps not only keeps the nutrients from being absorbed into your bloodstream, but it can reabsorb toxins and send it to the brain, and this causes migraines. All right. Gut health is brain health. We found that people who did these uh, enemas or colonics, particularly enemas, because you don't have to rely on a machine, is they were healing with urine therapy, Alzheimer's, autism, ADD, senility, depression, suicidal tendency, addictions. All these were being turned around. In the, well, you got to change your diet, but all these were turned around because people were restoring the biome and the health of their gut. So it's a good idea to uh, look at all areas of your of your health, of your wellness, to see what needs to be corrected. And for most people, it's moving to a raw food diet and getting plenty of exercise and having a a um, sacred time or a spiritual practice that you can always um, go to every day. Because our work to stay healthy is to keep our vibration high. And your vibration goes down if you have negative thinking or uh, foods that don't support your health. I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right, last but not least, uh, two last items. Two items. You know what this is? Shower cup. <laughs> yeah. You you come to realize when you do Shivambu a lot, your imagination gets set free and you start thinking outside the box. These could be either used to hold the orin in if you have a scalp, a mental issue, hair, whatever it is, or you can put these on the feet and have a mobile foot soak in your house. You could put it over your hands. I mean, you can do whatever you want. And these, you've seen the silicone gloves that people use for cleaning buildings or surgery, right? Fill this up with urine, put your hand in it, seal it somewhere. And these are for if you've got conditions on your hands or if you've got arthritis or if you've got some kind of hand condition, silicone gloves, something, all, all you're doing is looking for some way to hold it in place. When you have a, when you have something going on with your abdomen, you got something going on with your genitals, you got something going on and there's, there's some reason to put a compress on your body, um, you want to find some way to put that on there. So it's either you're going to either use a washcloth or plastic or whatever it is that'll hold it in place. Oh, last but not least, white ormus gold. What is that? This is aged urine, evolving urine that's been left out in the sun for two weeks and dried. And the stuff that remains is a combination of trillions of stem cells, antibodies, and nutrients. And some people say this was the famous Ormus gold that alchemists like St. Germain use to transmute uh, metals into gold. So, and what people do with this is they just, they, they leave it in a, in a flat dish, they put it out in the sun, and when it's dried out, they just take a little out of it and put it on the tip of their tongue or find some way to get it back into their bloodstream. And it's free. <laughs> which most of this is all right any questions guys um sorry. Uh, uh, is daniel he's still here he's still with us you have a question yeah i am thinking <laughs> well um can, can i ask 
question? Yeah, go ahead. We're going to go into the history of this uh, water in just a minute. Okay. So with the eye washes, can it help eyesight come back? This is a great question. Uh, people will ask, will it heal this? Will it heal that? Will it heal this? Okay. First of all, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. I don't operate in that world, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. So uh, I won't be giving advice or diagnosing, but I would tell you this, that when I use it, I feel better. That's yeah. just a generic answer. The only thing you cannot heal, Donna or, or Daniel, is what you believe you cannot heal. Yeah. The body's designed to regenerate itself, and it works a lot better if your diet is right, if your mind is in the right place. So whether it's a cataract, floating conditions, blind, uh, night blindness, uh, yeah. You just have to do the work and be determined to, and have your intentions set, you will. I threw away my glasses when I was 22. Doing this? No, I wasn't into urine therapy, but I was into fasting and raw foods. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now you got the power hitter of the super water. Mm. Yeah. All right. So if you want to talk to me about this offside the call, uh, outside the call, then we can, you know, look at different ways that you can approach it. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. cool. Daniel, did you have a question? Oh. All right. Let's go a little uh, bit. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, talk to her later. Uh, um, oh, you can give her my. Do you have Instagram? Are you wanting to connect with Donna? Is that what you're asking, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah, I'll set you guys up with that after the call. All right. I'm going to connect Daniel and Donna. All right. So what we're going to go over really quickly here is the Shibambu Wisdoms. Did you get the chart? An email, Donna. Uh, I don't know if I got it to you. Yeah, uh, it was it was all blurry when he uh, made it bigger. What the book? Did you send? No, no, no. The the Shivamba Wisdom chart. I'm going to get it to you. Just. I'm going to go over it first. Uh, Daniel, you're saying it didn't uh, translate. You couldn't read it very well. Oh, well, he tried to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. I, I flipped it 200%. It's hard to read. Right. Well, love, well, we can figure that out. But for now, I'm going to go over um, the main points of the Shivamba wisdom. I didn't get the chat. Okay. Well, I made a note. I'm going to get it to you. Thank you. Yeah, so these, these are the the most important points of why it works. And when you study these points and you really understand them and learn them, then you'll be able to answer the majority of the questions that people will throw at you. Now you just started your journey, Donna. Yeah. There's gonna be more people following you that aren't as advanced as you are and you're not even that advanced yet. Yeah. So these questions, will come at you left and right. And when you understand the wisdoms, you'll be able to shortcut uh, not only how they use urine, but how they can uh, gain the, the greatest benefit from it. Number one, Shivambu or Oren is an intuitive medicine. Mm -hmm. What that means is your inner guidance system known as your intuition will guide you as to, should you fast on it all day? Should you drink it all day? Should you take it close to medicine or food? Uh, should you drink it too close to bedtime? And some people like myself, don't, take, don't drink our urine past like six or seven at night because it acts like a diuretic. And if you want to sleep through the night, and don't want to get up. It's a blessing part. <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing either way. If you don't want to have to get up and pee during the night. Can it also make you um, more, because I notice, Sometimes when I have it just before I go to bed, I'm more energized. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sleep well, well I'll sleep that I do. Yeah. So your intuition will guide you in, in that as well. All right. Because people are going to ask you, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And what do I do about that? And I said, well, if I keep giving you my advice, when will you become empowered to understand the power of your body? 
And so our job is to let people know it's in, number one, it's intuitive. Number two, it works regardless of your considerations. Let me explain. Is this in the handout? Because I'm writing this down. Do I need to write it down? Um, well, it's going to be in the chart that I'm going to send you. Whether you write it down or not is up to you. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Listen to this. This is an important part. By the way, we've got an hour and a half for class today. So we're going to try to get in what we can. Uh, it's a universal panacea. That, that means it's a universal remedy. That means it doesn't matter if you use yours, your mother's, your son's, your, your partner's. It doesn't matter if it's a man's or a woman's. It doesn't matter if it's a senior or a child. It doesn't matter if it's the same species people drink from cow urine, camel urine, dog urine. It's a universal panacea. We have more and more testimonials that come to us from people who were sick. There was a good friend of mine. He's in, um, where is he in? He's not in Botswana. Yes, he is in Botswana. No, he's in Nigeria. Uh, Bumi Samola. When he was 10, he was real sick, and his mom remembered the ancient ways of working with urine therapy. She fed her urine to her son. He recovered. He got super well 25 years later. He's not only a urine therapist, well known out there in Africa, he's building a urine therapy center on his property. We hear stories from mothers whose child's health came back, who cleared up autism and multiple sclerosis. We hear stories of not only uh, pet owners feeding it to their pets. I have dear friends who do urine baths and they go, they go away for a while in the bathroom. They come in and their dog is splashing in the bathtub and drinking the urine in the bathtub. Animals know. <clears throat> okay, number three, any questions so far on those points? Number three, Shivambu alchemizes anything it touches. Another way to say it is that whatever it touches, it will sterilize it, it will neutralize it, it will raise the vibration of it, and basically it, it assimilate, assimilates it into the urine. It is now the same as the golden water. Here's an example. People say, well, if I have oral health and I'm dealing with gum disease, disease, or oral issues, and tongue, and teeth, whatever. Should I gargle with it and then spit it out? I said, wait a minute, listen to what you just said. You're in, just sterilized it and alchemized it, swallow it. You with me on this so far? Mm -hmm. And you get a kick when you've been doing this for as long as I have, when one day you're doing something in the bathroom, you're doing a protocol, you might be doing an enema or you're doing some kind of protocol and you accidentally spill it on the floor. Well, you can't help but start laughing because you just disinfected your floor. <laughs> you, you got the most antibacterial, antifungal, anti-whatever product on the planet. So why do we freak out unless our old mind's going, oh, that was dirty. No, you just cleaned your floor, dude. Okay. Um, yeah. I've cleaned a lot with urine. I've even cleaned your uh, your old rust stains off the toilet, and it didn't come back. Usually, it comes back after a month, but yeah. it didn't come back. Good point. Good point. So, as you can see, the uses are endless. However, you want to use this. All right. The next point is that many people use the word "aged" and "aging" when they're talking about. Uh, our water being maturing and gaining in strength and so forth. Well, in my first book, I realized that that word polarizes people because they think that the word aging is associated with getting old, getting yeah. sick, losing your power. Oh, that's like an old person's water. And so um, in all my teachings and writings, we refer to it as evolving orin or evolutionary orin because it's gaining in stem cells, it's gaining in potency. So if you hear me say evolution or evolving, you'll know what that means. Now, because to really gain an understanding of a water that's on the realm of infinity, because it's known as Shiva, Shivambu really literally means water of Shiva or blood of the Lord, because we're drinking plasma water. 
So sometimes when you try and explain this to newbies who've never even heard of urine therapy, much less open their mind to the possibility that you're telling the truth and you're not some kook, is to explain something that's in a category all into itself. But the more you use it, you come to understand it and love it and appreciate it, that uh, this is for you, this is by you, and this is in the right timing that you need this to correct any health condition in your body. All right, uh, the, last, the last point is saturation dosing. Ever heard of that? Saturation dosing is basically a great way to accelerate your healing process without just doing the drinking part of it. Because if you're, particularly if people aren't changing their diet, they're not changing their attitudes, they're not working on their emotional patterns and thinking, et cetera, et cetera, it's more like a slow incremental change than versus a quantum healing. And so uh, what I recommend and what I teach in the books is do more protocols with the oral application. The eye rinses, the foot soaks, the enemas, the body washes, the more you can get these saturated into the bloodstream, the sooner you'll get out the toxins, the parasites, the heavy metals, and whatever else is interfering with your healing. Any questions? All right, so these are the Shivambu wisdoms, and I put them in a chart. I've been passing them around uh, social media for the last four or five years, and you're going to get them here soon here. Any questions? Does anybody need a five-minute break? We're good. Okay. When we do the long, when we do the longer classes, so some people need five or ten minutes, or they got to pee or something. So, all right. Here's a little bit of over overview of our history. Now, some say that it all started five thousand years ago. Uh, when Shiva, now this is according to the, the holy scriptures known as the Damar Tantra. Have you ever heard of them? That's a no. Okay, the Damar Tantra, let me, let me type it in there for you. Um, chat, is this chat? There it is. And this will be for everybody on the line. D-A-M-A-R-T-A-N-T-R-A. -A -A. That's the Damar Tantra. Now, there's a difference between recorded history. Some of those teachings, I'm going to explain how that how that Damar Tantra works and how it's a little bit different than how we approach uh, the subject today in 2023. Oh, my God, it's 2023. <laughs> we got here. Amazing. Amazing. So there's a difference, you guys know this, there's a difference between written history and non-written history. That doesn't mean non-hidden history didn't work. It didn't play out. It's not recorded. So when we talk about Shivamba going back 5,000 years, what we're referring to is what was written and known in the world as of 5,000 years ago. So how it played out is... <clears throat> This dude right here, known as that by the Hindus as the Lord of the universe, the creator, the destroyer, he goes in and out of form. He works with getting rid of the darkness on the planet and bringing light in our consciousness. Well, his partner, Bhavarti, one day outed him. She says, Shiva, how come you don't age? How come you always look so handsome and, and virile and sexy? What is your secret? She, he says, drink of yourself and you will live. You will know. So what did they did in the Damar Tantra is they laid out this nine-year program. And during the time you do this and you do that and you add these herbs and you do use a certain kind of vessel, and within that time period, you'll not only learn how to heal everything, but at the end of this nine-year program, you will be physically immortal. There's hope for us. But there's one thing that was written in this book that has confused the water movement, the Shivambu movement over these many years that I've been involved. And let's clarify, there's a verse that you've ever heard of drinking the mainstream, the midstream? Midstream, yeah. Yeah, some people have this practice where they, they 
avoid the beginning of the stream. They avoid the tip of the end of the stream. They save and just use the midstream because the Damar Tantra suggests that. However, we've learned different over these thousands of years. And if you read the next verse in the Damar Tantra, it says that a snake, according to superstition and tradition, can harm you either by its head or its tail. But we know different because in 2023, we know that every drop is sterile and every drop is precious. So you use all of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Some, uh, of, some of the things that are handed down to us needs to be questioned. So I hope you'll question your health gurus, your spiritual gurus, and anybody says something and you go, that doesn't register right. I don't feel that. So you'll know what's really true and what's not. Any questions? So if we go back to um, if we go back to the to early Rome, Caesar was charging people for their urine. He had public urinals all over the plazas, and people not only had to use his urine out in the open; it was the only place to urinate. He was getting tax on them because he knew it had agricultural applications. He knew it helped in the laundry industry. They knew the power of urine uh, back then. In the 1400s, for example, the Aztecs were using it to heal wounds. This is in most of my books. In the 1500s, Magellan, who went on his world cruise with his big ships, uh, had his crew drink their pee because they didn't want to drink the, the ocean water. It, see, uh, this is amazing how many people know this stuff. In 1536, the Egyptian medical text had 50 formulas and recipes, and many of them included the use of orin in the remedies. In 1611, the King James Version had such lovely uh, verses such as, drink of thyself and out, out will pour a water of living, a living water, a wellspring of living water. Drink of your own cistern. Have you heard that one? That's, that's Proverbs 5.15. There's John 7.38. He that believeth in me will have a, a, light, a living water. And these are all references in the Bible, uh, which are available if you need to look them up or if you want to get them from me, uh, those are available as well. 1695, they, the sound, the, um, there was an English physician reference book that talked about urine therapy. 1806, Lewis and Clark described Native Americans bathing in orin. Uh, in 1890, there was a book called A Thousand Notable Things that said urine or orin is a universal and excellent remedy for multiple of health challenges. 1930s ushered in... Um, a Frenchman who wrote a book on sex and adrenal functions, glandular hormones were located in orin, so they found uh, estrogen and testosterone back in the 1930s. Let me go back to 1917. I missed this important a turning point in our history. Uh, 1917 was the establishment of the Rockefeller Foundation. You ever heard of those guys? Yeah. And boy, have we. They established the Rockefeller Foundation, with the sole purpose of controlling the health care industry worldwide. And it was then in 1917, they decided it was there, up to them, to get rid of their, their competition, which was alternative health care modalities and even urine therapy. So that's when they started this heavy propaganda stuff that it's disgusting, it's terrible stuff. Well, between that, if that didn't mess us up, the thing that really hurt a lot of us in our relationship and appreciation of urine was potty training and early toilet training. I don't know if you guys can remember that lovely um, defining moment in your early years, but we had to wipe ourselves because it was dirty. And so we formed this negative association. And then here comes someone like me or you coming up to someone and say, have you ever heard of urine therapy? So these are the kind of things that we're up against, not up against, but some of the ways that we're challenged when we're explaining this to newbies. Uh, 1944 was the Water of Life book by John W. Armstrong. <clears throat> he actually wrote it in 1920, but it was published in 1944 and then in 1970. And he had thousands of cases. Now he was not a doctor. 
he might have been a naturopath, but he healed himself. And then he started getting people on fasting with urine. He had people heal blindness by fasting for 100 days. He had all kinds of conditions. And it was he who first put out the first way to measure what evolving urine is. He came up with the, the measurement of four days, considers it aged urine or evolving urine. I mean, if that question ever come up for you guys, how do you determine if it when it actually is evolving urine? Yeah. Well, there are various experts, quote, experts out there uh, that have been weighing in over the last few years. Dr. Rosalind Hansen, she suggests that nine months is the calendar date to measure if it's uh, aged or evolving urine. Uh, other people say months. This is the way I... I um, this is the way I look at it. The moment you collect it, it is evolving, right? So if you want to determine, well, the longer you have it, the more evolved, the more potent, the more activated it is, that's fine. If you've got the patience to hold aside three gallons for a bath, great. It may take you a while to do that. But if you really need it because you need to get correct something in your body and it's only three or four days old or two or three weeks old, you're not going to wait. So once again, it's an intuitive choice on that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, because the in Emerald Tablets, they talk about uh, rejuvenating yourself when you drink of yourself for three days straight. Right. Did you hear that, Donna? Not quite. No. Say it again, Daniel. Uh, when you drink of yourself for three days or more, it you get to revitalize your entire uh, uh, system of your body. Did you get that? So is that... Um, you get straight for three days. And without food or just drinking it, looping it, basically? Is that what you mean? Is that what you're suggesting, Daniel, is just loop it and drink all that you collect all day? Yeah, for three to four days. Um, three or four days. Because that's what... A lot of my friends they uh, take care of a lot of stuff like ovarian cysts and mm -hmm. many other things. Uh, okay, so that's, that's, they've helped it with the ovarian cysts and all kinds of health challenges. Okay. Basically, basically, a simple rule of thumb is: the more you can drink it, the more often you can drink it, the better you'll be. And some people have actually told me. They don't drink anything else. They don't use distilled water. They don't have fruit juice. That's that's their fluid of choice. So it's intuitive choices here. Uh, 1963, a book that came out is called the Manu Manova. What is it called? Manav Mutra. And then in the 1990s, here comes the Golden Fountain, Your Water's Perfect Medicine by Martha Christie. Um, there was one by a Dr. Beatrice Barnett. These books started coming out in the 90s. And then there was like this dry period of writers until I, I realized that we need new books. <laughs> I discovered social media was all about urine therapy in, in, in 2017. And so then I came up with the first book, Healing Water from Within, as a way to bring everything up to modern understanding in modern times. Any questions about the history of your there? Any questions about how you can get better looking, better tasting, better smelling orange? Or do you have, you want to weigh in on that? It's just clean foods, isn't it really? Like organic raw i'm a vegan so i don't do the, the meat i wouldn't know or dairy wouldn't know what it tastes like that the, way. the closer the closer you can get to fruitarianism the closer you can get to raw veganism and living plant foods <clears throat> the 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 cleaner your body looks I mean, the, the urine looks, the taste is totally different. The smell is totally different. The viscosity or the thickness are, are things that are in it. They're totally different. Uh, and when you combine that with drinking it throughout the day, it starts to taste like a, a fine ambrosia coconut water. And this is when people go, I just want to keep on drinking. 
So it's a way to measure if your diet is off. If it tastes too salty, that either means you added the salt or it came in a premix of food and you didn't know it was in there. Body has a, has a lovely way of revealing things. Okay. We're going to go to... Um, Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. All right, how does it affect the cover research in clinical study to be page number two? Page 15. Bear with me, guys. I'm just jumping into page 15. I don't know if you can pull up your PDF or anybody has their book, but. In 1975, one of the founders of Miles Laboratory published his book, Your Analysis of Clinical Laboratory Practice in which he remarked that not only is orin a sterile compound purer than distilled water, but it is now recognized that orin contains 4,000 compounds, substrates, ingredients, whatever you want to call them. That's more than everything in a health food store. And you basically have a pharmacy inside your bladder, inside your body. From among the the constituents mentioned in his book, check out this list of nutrients that will knock your socks off. And this is just a, a small uh, list of some of the things that are found in it. And then I'm going to explain how people are able to cut, off, cut down stress and why these nutrients help you to do that. If you have stress, if you have adrenal exhaustion, if your nerves are frayed, I'll just explain. It's easier than me looking back at the book here. Some of the ingredients that help you to relax are in this water. Magnesium, potassium, melatonin, serotonin, DHEA, oxytocin, um, B vitamins, folic acid, niacin. These are all known to help relax the body, relax the intestines, relax the muscles, nourish the heart. And the brain also gets fed. So when you're drinking this, people feel more at ease with their stresses in life. They feel that they can, they can approach it in a much calmer way. So here's some of the other nutrients that are found inside your water. Adrenaline, alanine, albumin, allotonin, antibodies, amino acids, arginine, ascorbic acid, bicarbonate, biotin, calcium, carb carbohydrates, chloride, chlorine, cortisone, creatinine, cysteine, DHEA, dopamine, enzymes, epiphed, epinephrine, estrogen, folic acid, glucose, glutamic acid, glycine, hormones, inositol, Insulin, iodine, iron, leucine, lysine, magnesium, manganese, melatonin, methionine, nitrogen, ornithine, oxytocin, panathenic acid, phenylalanine, phosphorus, potassium, pro progesterone, proteins, riboflavin, selenium, serotonin, stem cells, sulfur, testosterone, thiamine, tryptophan, tyrosine, urea, vasopressin, vitamins A, B6, B12, C, D, E, K, and zinc. Just a few. That's only part of 4,000 nutrients. And some of them I cannot even uh, uh, pronounce, so I'm not going to go there. So does that kind of inspire you at all, guys? Fantastic. Yeah. And, and when you really start using this, you start to realize that you don't have to buy the stuff in the health food stores to get what your body's already producing for you. What's yeah, it's more... And it's also more, way more bioavailable to your system than even having salt. You, you got your salt within you already, and you don't need to add it. Because right. most all salt that you get um, from um, other sources aren't really bioavailable. And they just sit inside your intestine, just clogging your intestine. Right. So 
uh, we've got the correct uh, sodium um, nutrient in our water. Is that it, Daniel? Okay, I'm going to read a little yeah. bit. I'm going to read a little bit more from this chapter. Right. In addition to the above substances, Orin is an excellent biofeedback machine, which I kind of hinted at, Donna. It contains the broken down products of the metabolism of each of our trillions of cells. These particles carry up-to-date information on the exact status of the health of each individual cell at any given moment of time. It also contains other products manufactured by the body to counteract any ailment. Orin is a perfect telltale and excellent diagnostic agent. Thus, for instance, vitamin A is not normally excreted in the orin, but in patients with cancer and tuberculosis, large quantities of vitamin A can be detected. The composition of orin changes from season to season, and in fact, moment to moment. Lack of sleep, poor food choices, and unhealthy eating habits, grief, and happy moments each influence the composition of orin. Good idea to play and sing, that'll help it. If we had sophisticated instruments to detect each and every particle present in Orin, we would get a perfect scan of the functioning of all cells present in the body, which are particular to a specific moment, and perhaps know the complex role in performed by the body to restore health. The functions of the main substances of Orin are described in down here, but that's way too lengthy uh, for me to go right now. So why is it important to know what's in the water? When you're studying for your own use and for your own lifestyle, which you'll be building here uh, of how you're gonna design your life so that you can fit in the protocols through the day, um, you're also thinking of ways that you can educate other people. And people will come to you. I mean, if you, if you feel called to be a teacher, Knowing as much as you can about the subject, having as much direct experience about the subject will give you the confidence and, and the ability to pass that information and educate other people. Um, knowing what's in the products or what's in the water can help you to address people's health problems. If they've got adrenal exhaustion, if they've got a heart condition, if they've got a mental thing, if they've got inflammation, when you know the ingredients, and if you have a background in nutrition like some of us have, and you, then you'll know how to approach it in that direction. If you understand the psychology and the emotional uh, ways people think and operate, you can address it from that. But in either case, knowing the protocols uh, gives you a, a good way to put together what I call general treatment suggestions, which we're gonna study in one of the classes. So if somebody has these health challenges, uh, this is laid out in the book. So you can see what to do if they have arthritis, what to do if they have cancer, what to do if they have multiple sclerosis, what to do if they have, whatever the subject is, there, there's a list of the names of the diseases and the suggested protocols that go with it. The reason we call it general treatment suggestions is obvious, we're not doctors. So we're not gonna say, these are your prescriptions for getting better. You learn when you're having these conversations with other people who are doing urine therapy, you can talk one way, but if you're talking to someone who's not uh, well-educated in urine therapy, you gotta learn a new language to be able to communicate with them. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? Like ask for urine. Yeah. Um, and that's the one thing I learned uh, to ask your urine, uh, especially when you're barefoot on earth and to dismantle uh, the uh, underlying uh, belief systems that will shatter anything <laughs> the, uh, on what you're mostly uh, most um, fearful of is. Um, ask your urine is what Daniel is uh, telling us. Yeah, hold it to your uh your chest and um ask it while you're barefoot on the earth as well as um sip it um while you're barefoot on earth ask it yeah i'm relaying this when to Donna. when you're about to sleep helps too uh helps you sleep and then drink the rest when you're uh when you go 
and you may receive the answers okay. more um, intuitively. Drink the rest when you wake up and you'll receive answers intuitively. Those are great words of, of wisdom. Thank you, Daniel. All right, I'm gonna ask a question to, the, to you guys. It's time to get you guys involved. Did you ever feel discouraged when you started doing urine therapy? Or you, you knew it was right, you started on it and you haven't slowed down ever since. Did you ever have any discouragement? Nope. Nope, Daniel, that's a nope. Yeah. Uh... Um, at first, years ago. <laughs> but All right. Could you ever? Sleep from my family. Because <laughs> I, was, I was saving too much of it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's something we're going to talk about later. And uh, I'm going to be producing an instructional video and an article about how to have the Shivambu lifestyle that you want without feeling you have to compromise for a partner or your parents or kids or anybody. Because some people get bumped up to that and they're going, yeah. what? I can't do what? <laughs> and, and we're to donate it to, like, if, if people want, uh, if more uh, people in the me like if there's a uh a, a, a telegram or um a truth place, a truth uh, test uh a group a group um of five more groups that uh want uh know where they can get a uh, possibly free or donation based of uh, um aged um urine um, evolved urine. Um, oh you, you want to know you want to make it available so people can source out some yeah and um uh, you're talking about the people I, who are not collecting their own well if they uh, if they haven't evolved it um quite as much as they want to um, yet and they wanted uh, <clears throat> feel something a lot deeper are you, yeah, are you, and they just started oh okay so you're suggesting that people need to get some evolving orange but they don't have theirs evolved yet they can they can get it from someone else yeah like me or right or, or uh or donna <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th this is true and there is there is um <clears throat> There's a gentleman who has um, been doing urine therapy for 22 years, and he was one of the speakers at our last retreat in Portland. His name is Doc Mike Wittort, and he has come up with this uh, idea about sharing uh, our water with anybody who wants to share with us around the world. And his idea was to take one of these cotton pads, soak it with orin, let it dry like out in the sun, stick it in an envelope and mail it to somebody. And then all they have to do is soak it in water like a tea bag and rehydrate it. And this theory is that you will now have the immunity of two immune systems. And he's done this with 50 of his students. He got me going with it. I've got a lot. I've, I've drank the urine of about 15 of my students. And I don't know if my immunity is any stronger or not, but I just thought the exchange program was, was clever. Um, now you're a vegan, Daniel. What are you eating these days? Um, on and off being a vegan and vegetarian, uh, but yeah, I'm trying to get off of of wheat and uh, what it helps me is uh, to get off most of the sweets is just to. He had a sweet tooth. <laughs> Memorize what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. Memorize uh, like what cookies taste like, so I don't have to eat one. Partake in them uh, because can, you, I can start you hear him, Donna? Binging. Right. So uh, a good way to get through this, because I mean, all those foods are addictive. 
or there's parasites that want it. So you need to find a new, a new association with a positive reward because if these aren't going to make you feel good and you feel guilty afterwards, that's not self-love. That's not a reward. So start choosing the foods that you'd prefer to eat and have it in your mind that this is a loving, nurturing act and, make, and create a new association with the food, and then you'll break the connection with the other foods. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you. you the reason we ate the way we ate our whole life is because we've been programmed to eat that way from our parents, our friends, society, and so forth. And all you have to do is change the habit, change the practice, and start doing things on purpose of what you prefer and that thing you can break the addiction to those foods and some people get there by fasting because when you do enough urine and urine fast and saturation dosing the brain chemistry resets this is amazing donna and i've worked with quite a few people that got off of their addictions and it could have been substances it could have been sex one guy came on our first world conference call and said because you're in therapy he stopped doing uh pornography he was watching pornography and that was his addiction he couldn't get over it and so what happens is the brain chemistry resets you come back into balance and you realize oh those weren't good choices and so when people are uh, coming to you and say will it help with addictions yeah but you also have to change your diet and some other things as well but yeah you can you can break those bonds does that make sense, Daniel? So how, how long did he uh, um, fast off of uh, fast on urine to right. break? Uh, the... It's case by case. Some people they knocked it out in three days. Some people took them a week, but it's going to be based on your motivation and determination. Because if you got a strong willpower, you can turn anything around at any time. It's just you have to deal with your resistance and your old belief system. Everybody breathe. We do a lot of that in these classes. Okay. Um, okay, I already asked that question. What type of food are you eating? Do you ever collect your pee when you're away from the house? And how do you collect it? With my hand. With your hand. Some of us carry these in our car. Yes, I've done that. Have you ever seen the collapsible cups known as the hideaway? I've seen you, yeah, I've seen you on an interview somewhere. Um, yeah, it folds down to this size. It looks like a little flying saucer. Then you unfold it, you open it up, and it holds like 17 ounces, 32 ounces. And whenever when you travel, there's no cup. I mean, it's great for flying on a plane because there's you don't have to leave anything behind. It becomes a cup when you're ready for it. And that's become really popular in the water community because they have a cup that'll hold that much urine anytime they need it. Yeah. I would suggest a minimum of 16 ounces because that's how the average amount of pee you, um, pee you, out. you pee out. Yeah, 16 ounces. Can, um, I, can I just quickly tell you this? I heard... I have um I have back injuries and mm -hmm. I actually hurt my back one morning and I had to go to work and I had a wedding to organize and I went into the bathroom I thought this is going to actually test this and I had some a well evolved it was only a couple of weeks or a month or something and I rubbed it on my back and I never ever when I'm stuck I'm stuck I can't mm -hmm. and I walked out of the bathroom I just mm -hmm. walked out and I took it with me during the day. And when it started to ache, I just ran out to my car and rubbed it in. And I got through that whole, in, in fact, it didn't come back. I was absolutely amazed. Absolutely. That's never happened. I get stuck. I can't hardly move when my back goes. So that was really exciting. And I just took it in a jar. Stunk my car out, but I took it in a jar. And how soon did you notice results? Straight away. Straight, Straight away. away. Because I can't, normally I can't move. I have to, so I sort of struggled to the bathroom. I got it and I walked out of the bathroom. And my 14 year old daughter, I said, I think I've just experienced a miracle. Because she was like, oh, you're all right, mum, you're all right. Because she knows. 
where my back goes and she couldn't believe it either yeah so it was really exciting so I took it with me for the day <laughs> that is exciting and this is the kind of testimonials uh I would love to get from you um so that we can share it with the world yeah. Yeah. um did you ever join Shivambu Hut do you know what the Shivambu Hut is no let me give you the address where to find it. S H I V A M B H U dot org. And what you're going to find there is the Shivambu link to the Shivambu hut. And the Shivambu hut, can you see that? Yeah. The Shivambu hut is a social media platform that. Um, that we put together and we is Shivambu, which is our nonprofit organization that's been building a infrastructure for the worldwide family. Uh, we have a water family directory that, that lists teachers and therapists around the world. And the hut has almost 900 members now. And what's so beautiful is people are sharing their testimonials. They're sharing their discoveries. They're sharing their memes, their laughter um, videos. And it's a great way to network and, and make new friends. Right. You will notice if you haven't already, Daniel's had direct experience because he showed up at our retreat in, in Oregon a couple months ago, is that people in the water family, when they meet other people in the water family, there's not only an instant connection, but you feel like you've known him for years and you've got a friend. So there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of love and support. Daniel, did you want to add to that? Yeah, that was a wonderful experience. I have a, a testimonial on my Instagram as, um, as well as my um, Anchor under uh, Anchor app. Uh, I have a whole uh, 11. Um, He's got a testimonial. Podcast. <laughs> Can he put that on the chat? Um, oh. Daniel, can you send me that uh, a link to that testimonial or send the testimonial file? Instagram. Okay. Um, and then I can share it with Donna, or if you can put it in this chat my, feed. My Instagram is p underscore. Wait, wait, wait. Can you type it in the chat feed? Do, are you able to type? I don't like, uh, are you still on Zoom? No. Okay, what is it? Yeah, it hasn't got even yet to work. I'll just put it on my my hmm. the text. Uh, okay, so he'll send it to me, Don, and I'll forward it to you. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Send Daniel's testimonial to Donna the Mantra Queen. <laughs> My favorite mantra of all times is, I'm okay. It's in English, it's not difficult to learn, and it's appropriate anywhere you go. I'm okay, I'm okay, I got this, I'm okay. I'm standing tall, I'm good. <laughs> in case you ever question you know, your ability to get through a situation that scares you. And I know you're a strong, you're a strong warrior type woman, so that won't be a problem. All right, he sent it to me by text. I'm going to send it to you by messenger. Thank you. And that's his Instagram account, Donna. Thank you. As, as well as Epic Dan. Um, yeah, one's fine, um, Daniel. What? One, that'll do it. Yeah. Thank you. And then she, okay. she can reach out to you if she wants a copy of the testimonial. And I'll definitely want a copy. Yeah, I also put it on the um, thing I'm recording on right uh, the voice right now, so I'll send that later. <laughs> did you did you ever put it at the Shivambu Hut? Uh, I this is actually the first time I actually went. I've been so busy I forgot that you mentioned it last time. Okay, so I haven't really looked at Shivambu Hut too much. <laughs> no problem, Daniel. We'll we'll um we'll work on that. Yeah, that I should just be, looked should, at it again. That should be a no brainer. I um, saved it to the computer. 
I'm going to ask you guys a question. Which topical protocols are you practicing these days? And how often do you practice them? Donna, which yeah. protocols are you practicing and how often? Why are you practicing those of all protocols? Um, because when I jump into things, I just go full on. So I'm I'm doing um, the drinking and mm -hmm. do the eye wash, this, the snorting. Um, okay. I, it, I do it in my hair, um, my body. The soles, my feet, not always though, not every day, but the other ones every day. Um, I'm doing the foot baths, not mm -hmm. every day either. Yeah, I think. And I've started the belly button. I've done that a couple of times and I did it yesterday, walked around with it. <laughs> my <laughs> belly button. Um, yeah, I just haven't really done the enemas and I think the ears I don't always do either. But basically everything that I've read about, I do. Well, I try to. Okay. Um, I actually put together a calendar that needs to be edited and sent to the graphics designer. It's the 28-day uh, Shivambu Protocols candle, calendar. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to list all the protocols on one column and then put a code next to each one so that on every day of the week, you can put whatever protocol you will do on Monday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, da da da. So you don't have to think about you missed one, you want to add one, and you just look at the calendar and go, oh yeah, this is the day I fast. This is the day I do foot soaks. This is the day um, I do the belly button soak. Because the rest is just routine in the morning for me. It's just what I do in the morning now. Yes. And what some people find handy is they keep a jar in their medicine cabinet or underneath the, the bathroom sink. So after you've done sitting on the toilet and did whatever you do in the bathroom, uh, you're right there at the sink and you can just knock out five or six protocols at a time, yeah. right? And another way to knock them out is when you're taking, a, uh, do you take a bath or a shower? Shower. A shower, okay, I'm a bath guy, but everyone does their own thing. While you're standing in the shower, bring some Orin in the shower with you and knock them out. Start doing the protocols while you're in the shower or while you're in there, no one's looking, collect some fresh. Yeah. Everybody pees in the bath, so you know it's no big deal. Uh Daniel. Yeah. Daniel, what protocols are your favorite and why? Um uh, probably um uh, spraying it or uh dipping my finger. Um Putting in my nose mm -hmm. or spraying it up my nose. Okay. It helps uh, energize you and decalcifies your brain as well as your pineal gland yep. and, uh, and uh, um, activates the synapses in your brain. Uh, so, have you noticed that or are um, you just telling me that? Clear mind. What? Have yes, you? I have noticed that myself. Beautiful. Um, so, and, uh, and all the other ones that you've mentioned throughout the whole um, talk mm -hmm. um, that I have done at least uh, three times, including the uh, enema. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one one thing that's been fun for me, being being the guy I am, part of this urine therapy movement, is I go to stores and many times I find myself at Walgreens and these kind of uh, drug stores, and I look on the shelves at at items that supposedly are healthcare items. For example, they have this thing called a saline. Uh, fleet enema bottle. See this? Inside they sell saline solution that's supposed to clear out the sinuses. But I'm staring at this bottle. I'm going, no, 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 that's not what it's for. I can really see a potential here. So I, I bought it. It's like two bucks. I cleaned it out. And this is awesome for up the nose in the ear. So you will see things. 
uh, out there in the store and your mind will see it through the eyes of a, a, a urine therapy practitioner and go, no, 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 this is a spray bottle that they were selling hydrogen peroxide in. I go, no, 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 that's not what you use it for. You use it for spraying urine therapy on your urine on your face. You know, you can go squirt, squirt on your face. You can use it uh, as a humidifier to clean out, you know, airborne mold and fungus in the air. And you will start seeing objects in different ways. Like if you go to the thrift shop, you'll discover there's things you could use it for something I've not even discovered. So just be open to uh, your mind uh, directing you different ways you can use uh, your therapy. Swishing too. Oh, swishing, yes. Did you read the part about the difference between swishing, gargling, and... Um, and looping? No, no. Because when you first put it in your mouth, if you just swallow it, that's great. It hits the mucus and it goes down to the throat and gets into this, you know, into the stream. But if you keep it in the mouth longer and longer, if you swish, the longer it stays in the mouth, the more sterile your mouth gets. So if you can hold it in there three minutes, five minutes, or whatever, just do something without talking and then swallow it. I do it in the shower. Yeah. So try that, Daniel. Yeah, I've done that. Wonderful. And uh, I feel like it also has natural natural hydrogen peroxide in it because it, you are um, You're talking evolving about it to um, a certain extent, especially if you uh, it's like um, a month it uh, evolves. Um, it feels like it's like dissolving like all the stuff that's not supposed to be um, coating your mouth. Your mouth, yes. <clears throat> it's also going to break down the mucus. Because when you get in the mouth, you know there's an interconnection between the ears, eyes, nose, and throat. You've heard of doctors that specialize in that. Because of the sinus cavities, there's an interconnection between these guys. So if you're holding in your mouth, guess where it can go? You know, you also got the vapor of it. Sometimes, I don't know if anybody does this, I just put my nose under it and get the essence of it in your head. Now, what's funny is I got to visit a good friend of mine, uh, a couple, well, Daniel knows her, Katie over in Arkansas. And uh, she's got it collected all over the place. I mean, Daniel's that way, it's all over the place. And people, people who don't know you walk in and go, what an interesting smelling house you have there. But if it's your essence, you know, kind of like your phenomones, you walk into the space. And I, I can see Donna going, ah, it's me. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. It's all the association we make with it. Yeah. Sometimes I go to this hot springs place. It's about uh, 45 minutes from here. And I bring three gallons or more with me. And I turn the motel room into a Shivambu spa. So for three days, I'm taking baths and doing foot soaks. I'm laying in the in the bed with this all over my body. And if you can pull that off at your house, kudos to you. Some people actually have like a redwood tub in their backyard filled with evolving orin with a lid on top of the hot tub. And they just go in and out of it whenever they need to and never do anything with it. Yeah. There's also a lot of people that actually uh, pay up towards of $2,000 or more. In a, uh, for evolved urine, and they have uh, northern stone, or they have uh, a bath for um, evolving urine is just evolving over several years, mm -hmm. and then they just do the these high client uh, clientele that um, for um, was it stem cell. Stem cells, yes. Yeah. Now, I have an a incident where I have a housemate who had knee problems and he was considering going to Mexico for stem cell injections. And people have gone that route. But he's also a student of mine and he drinks his orange and every now and then he puts it on his eyes. And he took my advice and started rubbing it on his knees. And lo and behold, in four days, his pain subsided. So here you get free stem cells. You guys understand uh, how stem cells work? 
Stem cells are basically non-designated or non-differentiated cells. They're like a cell waiting to become identified as a cell, an eye cell, a heart cell, a liver cell. So what happens is the body takes these stem cells and because of the information and the blueprint of what divine perfection of a cell is like, it patterns a new cell out of those stem cells and they become the cell that the body needs uh, that is weak or compromised. We have an amazing yeah. intelligence that runs our bodies. And if we would pay attention, we'd have less problems with our health and everything else in our life. And that's what uh, you uh, you had with your back, your um, journey. Who, Katie? The sister here. Oh, Donna? And that's what took care, yeah, that's what took care of her back is the, uh, the stem cells in the and they, they evolved here and mm -hmm. it was right. instant. I couldn't believe it was instant. That's what just blew me away. <laughs> yeah. And, and did it take you long to adjust? No, no. I walked out of the bathroom. I just kept rubbing it in for a little bit and then that was it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So these kind of remissions are healings are commonplace with people who use their water. Mm. Whether it's a burn, a sting, the guys who are having wasp uh, allergy problems, Norton Weber had a problem with wasps. He would swell up. He would almost like have a heart attack and go into all these kind of um, symptoms. And he found himself, he didn't have an EpiPen. He normally wouldn't shoot himself with the EpiPen uh, to get um, epinephrine inside his system for adrenaline. And so someone suggested drink, drink urine. So next time he got stung by a wasp, we drank some urine in a matter of a minute, this, everything went away. Now, some people who don't are not in a situation where they can urinate or they have a stroke or they have a heart attack or they have some kind of condition where they can't access their urine. This is where people do urine injections. And it's one of the protocols. And some people say, isn't that a bit extreme? I said, well, if it's between life and death, you're not going to think twice about it. And there are some people in this community that are doing urine injections in their hip, in their butt, in their thigh, because they have, they have health issues, but nothing is life and death. And they just want to know what experience is like to have it directly into your bloodstream. Any questions about injections? Uh, I'll probably start off with um, uh, pressure to start, probably. Yeah. Same with um, like the eyes and the nose and the ears. Yeah. Are you saying you might work your way up to doing injections? Because, I mean, I've been at this since 1994 and I've never done injections. I, just oh, yeah. never, I was never guided to it. Okay. Now you know. <laughs> you could put a bubble under your, uh, over the first layer of skin to start, probably. You t you're talking about to lift the skin to put in a needle? Yeah. Oh. Well, you guys are going to have to experiment with that one because I'm not... Uh, I'm not skilled in using needles. And I found that the closest person who would do that are the kind of people who are in your community that do, that do IV uh, either drips or shots with things like vitamin C, glutathione, B vitamins. And there are IV bars here in Colorado where people go in and they get those things injected in. You know what the drips are? They put it in their arm and there's a bag and it, when it's empty, you're done, you go home. And I've suggested urine therapy to some of these bars and they're going, we'll lose our license. We can't do, sorry, we can't do that. Which tells me they don't practice it or they'll find a way. That would be a new paradigm shift indeed if you could have a urine therapy spa in your town that offers everything, including colonics with urine in it, including facials, including foot soaps. Now, if you read the first book, The Healing Water from Within, 
uh, that in the Lay's book, I, I give people a, a peek of the future where this movement's going. Because many of these things that were predicted five years ago are coming true right now, which is very exciting. Any questions? Daniel, any questions? Uh, I was, uh, okay. Has, uh, I didn't know where to start. Uh, that's the other thing. I, I'm the one that answers the question. She's like, all right, Daniel, I'm just going to read a part that plays a pivotal part in, in urine therapy. Uh, it's the chapter three, if you want to look it up. Chapter three, page 11. This is all the subject of faith. This is one of your power tools to work with your determination, your motivation is the faith in your higher self, the faith in your water. So I'm going, did you, did you pull it up? No? Just wrote it down. I was wondering if you'd like to read some of that chapter. It's a, it's a four page chapter. That way we could have someone else's voice. Yours is fine. Oh. <laughs> I, majored, I majored in radio and television. I better have done this right. There you go. <laughs> All right. This is a uh, chapter three, how faith or what faith or trust plays in doing urine therapy. Sri Santa Balji considered urine therapy or in therapy to be the boon of nature and a blessing by God for humanity. He describes human orin as a divine and most powerful medicine. God has shown us this true sure cure for all diseases. The truly wise person considers orin as the best of all cures. Its prowess is indestructible. All of the many opinions about AUT which is uh, short for auto urine therapy. And this, there's a difference between UT in, in the United States and the West and in India, they refer to it as auto urine therapy, also known as Shibambu. Um, all the many opinions about auto urine therapy are worth considering with an open mind. It can be seen in all religions, all cultures and ancient Indian sects, including the Jains and the Buddhists who have considered the Oran cure to be a sure cure. And in case you didn't know this, the beginning origins, you're familiar with Ayurvedic medicine? Yeah. It was based on urine therapy. And some of the Ayurvedic practitioners and naturopaths and yogis still know this, but they don't necessarily mention it in their practice. That's pretty amazing. Uh, even the researchers are also slowly but unreservedly approving the sterling qualities of UT. All these opinions and verdicts are good eye openers. Has it occurred to you that Shivambu is your water of personal aliveness, well-being, a possible road to physical immortality? Without questions, concerns, or fears about getting better, you know, this is where faith comes in, you know that Shivambu is healing you, or it may, has, may have already healed you. This is the irony about the power of the mind. We keep thinking that something's going to happen at some point, and maybe it already took place, it already happened. You may, you may have already returned to your original state of heaven. You may have already healed this condition, but our mind doesn't operate that way. Let's get caught up. <laughs> uh, faith clears up obstructions, inflammation, toxins, pathogens, as these are being cleansed and released permanently from the body. Faith reminds you that you will never have to buy or use supplements or medications because it's all in the water. Faith in Shivambu will guide you to choose living foods, lighter foods, less food, or no food without any resistance or conflict. Faith in Shivambu clears the mind so creativity, imagination, and curiosity will reawaken. Of course, not everyone is ready for this leap of faith, which is to begin drinking pee. Instead of obsessing over taste and smell, Orin is a sample of what is flowing through your veins, and any repulsion or uh, negative action, uh, Orin is a motivation to improve the internal conditions rather than an excuse for not using Orin therapy. And it's always fascinating to think that what was once blood just a while ago is now medicine. Yeah. Now it's a fun thing to, to uh, wrap your mind around Donna 
is plasma. You know what plasma is, right? Yeah, yeah well, it's from the blood, isn't it? Well, one, one form of plasma is the life-giving uh, part of the blood that originates in the bone marrow, and then it gets transferred to the liver. The liver sends the plasma, just the plasma, to the kidneys, which is a filtration system, and it converts into ultra-filtered blood plasma. <clears throat> plasma is also that yellow bag that's used by the first responders when they put the patient in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, they're giving them IV drips of plasma. Let's go a little bit farther and a little more metaphysical on you, okay? The fourth state of matter is plasma. <clears throat> Physical, excuse me, solid, liquid, gas, ether, plasma. Fifth state of matter. What else is, what else is? Urine. Uh, urine is a fifth state of matter. It's plasma. We're also looking at 5D consciousness. And people are saying they're tapping into an understanding that they never could tap in before. And the water has not only freed up that space in your brain, but you're able to tap into other dimensions. They don't teach us in school, do they? No. <laughs> No, this is another paradigm. <clears throat> in, an in an alternative reality, we do this. It's commonplace. In an alternative reality, you can talk to anybody and say, I drink my pee, doesn't everybody? As you can tell, we got some ways to go. Yeah. All right, let's keep reading here. Mo moment by moment, it is faith, also known as trust, that is steadying and balancing you. Faith is guiding and carrying you while you are navigating the mind through its endless stream of ideas and mind chatter. Trust in your own living water, along with a daily practice utilizing a variety of UT protocols, and you will achieve perfect health, well-being, abundance, and overwhelming feelings of gratitude for life. Our holy water purifies, cleanses, restores, and regenerates every area of your life. Healing yourself or reclaiming your body occurs while the mind and spirit are being realigned, making the adjustments, thanks to the related nutrients found in your water. Shivambu devotees, also known as Shivambu enthusiasts, report a richness and greater quality of life. Their clear minds blended with a calm relaxation and joy brings them home to their natural way of being. Thanks to you, Shivambu, I am now at peace and in enjoying all the beauty, blessings, and bounty in this moment. We just lost Daniel. Let's see if we can get him back online. We're almost at the end of the class. You back? Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm going to read the last. I to... Yeah. I'm reading the last paragraph. And then we got uh, 10 more minutes to go over anything we need to go over before we close for today. Right. My faith, the last paragraph, faith is sending me one client at a time that's eager to return to superior quality of life. This would be for any kind of therapy you're dealing with. My faith is increasing. So are my clients faith in their daily use of urine therapy. The results are becoming exhilarating and transformational. Above all things, have faith in the presence or the light of in us all. Now take the Shivamu message to the world that is seeking answers to their health matters. Any questions? Anything you did not understand from today's class, guys? That's great. Um, did you take any notes? I started to, and then I just listened. Not a problem. Uh, this uh, class is being recorded, so all I have to do is check and see if Zoom recorded it, and then I can upload it on YouTube and send you guys the link. Awesome. Okay. Um, what I'd like you to do tonight, we're going to meet again at 10 in the morning. Um, is to write down anything you weren't sure of, any questions that came up for you. Um, anything you might've heard 
that you need clarification on. Just write it all down. I got it. I know it. Also write down anything you want to discuss. Okay. Some people, Donna, they start journaling when they get on this journey because they want to see what changes took place and how they got there. Yeah. So if you, guys, if you want to document your journey. Yeah. Now keep in mind that your healing is everyone's healing. You doing your work helps other people do their work. So it's not selfish to be healthy, happy, and free. It's actually, you're doing yourself a service. I've and started a little telegram group. Um, nobody's started it as far as I know. I've only got a little group there, but um, a couple of friends are really keen to listen. So I just do little videos and stuff. Yeah. Well, there's three or four. Uh, groups on telegram if you want to you know merge them together or let it drop your link on like dr shibambu is a group in telegram uh, i have a group that's urine therapy does the body good there's about 300 members so mm -hmm. you know you can always cross um promote yourself oh, promote myself. <laughs> yep okay but even yeah even just getting um some things like you do and daniel onto that would be good because like I'm, I'm just learning, so very beginning. Well, your insights and discoveries and your testimonials help everybody. Yeah. So if you have the inclination or the time, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, I have um, a, I one of my groups. I turn into a, a book, a free uh, PDF uh, file. What book? Uh, uh, it's a Telegram um, group, and there's several books on there that I. It's oh, just the uh, random books. <laughs> Some uh, uh, are on your own, but. Do you have Martha Christie's book or uh, John W. Armstrong's book? Maybe. Do you have those, Donna? Yeah, I've got them. Okay. Uh, some of those free PDF versions are at the Shibambu Hut. Uh, some people have posted uh, free books at the Hut. Some people have posted uh, videos. Uh, several of my interviews with Dr. Group, Amanda Vollmer, Kate Stillman, uh, Megan McDonald, uh, Darlene Tehan. Those are on my YouTube channel. And can I put them on my Telegram? You yeah, sure can. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Good. Let me give you the link com slash Brother Sage. Not to confuse with, there's another Brother Sage. Did you know that there's another Brother Sage? Hmm. My dog's name's Sage. <gasps> Is it a guy or a girl? It's a girl. I don't know. Oh, hi. What a sweetie. Can you give her a little more light on her? Oh. There you go. Oh, how cute. What's her name? Sage. Hi, Sage. Hi, Sage. <laughs> the, perfect, the perfect color collar. <laughs> yeah, I've got it with that. <laughs> All right. So, any last few words or remarks before we close the class for today? I've loved it. Just, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to be up at four in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> three, oh, actually. I got up at three to organize it. <laughs> yep, yeah, no, I'm glad I did. I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll get everybody the recording. Uh, Donna, anything you and I need to complete, we can do that off this call. And um, Daniel and Kevin, lovely having you in class. Also, me. Write down your mostly. questions. We'll go, what, Daniel? Oh, mostly me. It, I, I am grateful for what he has helped me with. He, he attempted to. Well, good. There's, there's a lot of wisdom in Shivambu, and what's going to be taught in the class is only some of it. The rest of it you're going to learn from direct experiences and from interacting with people in this community. Yeah. You mind? And I'm, 
You might even oh. find your soulmate. Yeah. Yeah. I might have found mine. Oh, interesting. As between her and me, I'm not supposed to say anything until anything is formal, but we've been growing deeper and closer uh, as the last three months have gone by. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. So guys, we're gonna close for now. Quick cyber hug to everybody. She's willing to play, I love it. Hug yourself and then visualize hugging everyone else. All right, we're Daniel. We just included you in the cyber hug, brother. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to close this down. See you guys tomorrow. Blessings. See you in the morning.